Hey everybody, it's Pauline here and welcome to Tuesday Talks. Today I'm going to talk about sealing your work. And I'm thinking that maybe some people wanted to know about sealing your work at the end, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about sealing in between. So I seal my work a number of times throughout my process and I think I really got into this when I started doing some drawing on my work. So when I grab, um, well, let's choose this, a mark making tool. Um, this is um, it's a gel stick and I start scribbling away on a painting to add some interest. Some of these are water soluble and if I don't seal them and I go over it with a paintbrush, then they're going to smear. And that might be okay sometimes if that's what I want. And though I, uh, you know, I may like the color mixing with paint, but I also might not want that. So in that case, then I will seal with, um, I don't have it with me because it's not my favorite, but it's a fixative that can, um, you know, seal work like you would use on, uh, oh, chalk pastel or, or that sort of thing. And it's workable fixative. There's lots of different kinds. Krylon makes this one. It's a workable fixative, but I don't like the smell of it. And so I don't use it that much, but I will use it outside. And um, then I let it dry. Another thing I'll use, um, particularly on paper, but sometimes on here, and, the, and this is because it's an in-between stage and I want to fix a mark, I'll tr I've tried using hairspray. I don't like the smell of that either. So that is not also high on my list, but I do it sometimes because my next um, option is Spectrafix, which is for pastel. Um, I might use this. This is a spray pump. And when I use this, I try to not disturb what I've sprayed. So if I use this and I sprayed it over top, if I then painted over it, I probably want, wouldn't want to be painting, painting, or painting because I don't trust that this is going to stay. That's one thing I use. Another thing that I use, which I love the most, is either using um, a medium. I can also use a gel. This is a matte gel, I wouldn't use that, I would use gloss. And again, my um, application would be really fast, so it would be over. I might use a brush or I might use this um, rubber color shaper. So I might just go over it and depending on what I'm using, uh, I'm going to get different results. Something uh, like you can, I've already gotten some yellow on here. So what was this? I forget. But anyways, my favorite though is using um, airbrush medium and spraying that on very lightly because that is like a medium, but it's super, super thin. And so you can get it to go through a sprayer. Okay, so that's how I seal my line work. And I do that in between, and then I'll paint over, and lots of marks get covered up, and then I will um, draw on it again. Okay, so that's just how I like to seal my drawing. And same goes for charcoal. I use all these things, you gotta test them out to see what you want. Um, as far as actually finishing a piece, um, let's just talk a little bit more about mediums because I use this matte medium. This is a matte medium, but it's more like a gel. And I use a matte medium that's more pourable and sometimes I'll mix water in it. And I use that for collaging into my work. And over the underneath so there's some collage under here and then I might use um, a gloss over top because I love how the gloss will make my colors pop again. But at the end of 
a painting when I want to seal it for good, I will first cover it with a gloss medium to seal everything in and that's also called an isolation coat which I will put over top of a finished painting before I put over the varnish. And I usually put a gloss medium over top. Um, and, and you know, before I do that, I'll make sure that all my marks have been fixed because now is not the time that I want mixing happening in with my gloss medium because this is gonna be an isolation coat before I put my varnish on. So I make sure that everything that I've got on here that might be loose, like anything water soluble, because there is water in a medium, I'll make sure that's fixed. And I'll fix it, fix it, fix it until I make sure that it is, because at this point I don't want blending happening um, and, and tinting and things like that where the color might mix in the gloss. Oh, I may as well just keep this here. So um, the next, so after I put on my uh, isolation coat, which is usually a gloss because I want to make sure that I love the color. Then I have a couple choices as far as varnish. Oh, and here, so I'm just going to show you these two mediums. I don't really like them, but I have them. So I use them and I water them down because in the end, uh, I'm using it up because in the end I'll use a higher quality for that isolation coat because let's face it I'm putting stuff in there that the longevity of it is questionable until I seal it so I'll even do that with a medium I'm not too impressed with and it's mostly because it remains tacky but the golden one is really awesome um, a lovely artist friend of mine in Kelowna Renata shared her her love of this with me and I really like it too because it doesn't it doesn't have that tackiness even after it's dry this one's much better so that's what I use as an isolation coat and then I'll have two varnishes one is gloss and one is uh, satin and satin is uh, not as dulled down as the matte medium but I still find it a little bit too dulling for my liking. So what I do is I mix these two together. Not in the bowl, not in the bottles. But I'll take a little um, takeout bowl like this and I'll pour some of my gloss in and I'll pour some of the satin in and I'll, you have to add water to it so I'll mix it up and I'll test it first to get it to the kind of sheen intensity that I want and so I found that to be really helpful for getting both the color that I want in the end as well as the non-reflectiveness and that's what I do so I would suggest testing out what you uh, like um, with all of these things you know again Matt I don't like for um, putting over my work in the end because it dulls down the color. You might like that, but I don't because I tend not to use really, really bright colors, but in the end, I don't want them to go down even duller than what I intended them to. So matte isn't what I want, it's, but it's great as a glue for um, collage. And then the gloss medium just really pumps up the color and uh, in the end, and use that as an isolation coat. And in the end, the satin polymer. And what's nice about these two golden products is it's got UVLS. So anything that you put in there, for the most part, if you're not sure if it's light fast, then this is going to give you some protection. And um, oh, one more thing. What did I do with the brush? Here we are. Put aside some brushes that you can use only for your varnishing and never use them for anything else. That's what these are for. And that's because then I never have any paint um, pigment molecules in here if I don't wash the brush well enough in none of them. There is a little bit of um, rust in there. That's what that is. It's not paint. And so I save these 
and I put them in this little package here so I don't mess up the um, hairs. And these are what I use for varnishing. Now there are other varnishes. You can get spray varnishes, both gloss and matte and even satin, which I do use too. I use those on um, mark making or texture. And there's a number of brands. I didn't pull those out. I'll see if I can find those fast. I don't have to go too far. Here's one. This is good. It's always nice to see the product. So this is odorless varnish and it's satin. And I'll do that for older works because I did do a lot of texturing um, back then, and but I also didn't always varnish. And so if something sells now, I will make sure that it's dust free and clean. And then instead of using one of these varnishes, I'll use a spray varnish because I can't remember that far back what I did and I don't want to mess it up with a brush. So, and that's by Cobra. Cobra. And these are all Canadian bought, but they're not all Canadian made. So I'm just gonna share with you what's here. That's the golden satin polymer varnish and the gloss. These two are Opus products, matte and um, gloss. And then of course, this is gloss medium by Golden. So I hope you found that helpful. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and share what you've discovered about isolation codes, varnishing, even if it's a bad story, because I'll tell you, that just helps us all learn what not to do. Like, for example, not putting on an isolation coat uh, when you've done mark making and you, you're almost done because you're gonna move things around and you might not want that. And then, you know, if you're fast, you can wash it off, but then you've also lost your mark. So you can tell your horror stories too, because that's kind of like comforting anyway. Um, I think that's it. So I hope you found that helpful. And um, yeah, leave the, your comments or questions below. Okay, thanks.